Chief Archibald, thanks for joining us. We understand Toronto law firm OTK Law has been retained by the Chiefs of Ontario in relation to the protests in Tyendinaga. Can you tell us a bit more about your role in all of this? Well, in terms of OKT Law, we uh, went to the injunction hearing, uh, I believe it was February the 13th or 14th, and uh, in order to understand that process, uh, I'm not a lawyer, so I retained uh, Maggie Wente to help me navigate that process and understand it better. Last Friday, the Prime Minister said the barricades must come down, and since then we've seen arrests, skids on fire, and standoffs on the tracks. What's your reaction to these developments? Well, first of all, to me, it's a very much a people's movement. It's a very grassroots movement. And as a First Nation leader, I stand with the people who feel compelled to take action on this matter. I mean, the heart of this matter is in British Columbia. Uh, that's where it's emanating from, from Wet'suwet'en territory. And I'm certainly standing with Wet'suwet'en people as they uh, do their best to protect their land and waters. It's been a quarter century since Ipperwash, where the OPP shot and killed Dudley George, and 13 years since the Ipperwash inquiry was released. Looking at Tyendinaga today, how do you feel the force has responded to those recommendations in the inquiry? Well, I, I can tell you what I've done in terms of reaching out. As soon as that blockade went up and there was a real danger for a repeat, um, I reached out to the OPP commissioner and asked him about the framework because I understood that as a result of Ipperwash, a framework was developed and that they had to follow this framework in order to protect lives and uh, bring peace to a situation like this. And so we immediately started to have conversations about how this framework was unfolding and how we could uh, find the best path forward in terms of peace and uh, ensuring that our people uh, were not criminalized. The OPP did say yesterday one demonstrator was hospitalized after his arrest. What needs to change to avoid violent confrontations with police in the future? Well, this is where I saw uh, that we need some more work on that framework. Um, the, what was happening on the ground and in discussions with the OPP had to do with how do we avoid, um, you know, loss of life loss of lives here. Mm -hmm. How do we avoid a violent escalation? And so in terms of what happened, we worked uh, for days and days and days, um, every day actually, talking about what progress was being made and how that progress meant that uh, the criminalization of our people for standing up for what they believed in would not happen and so it kept getting pushed because things were developing. There was a meeting with Minister Miller, there were other meetings happening and other discussions happening and letters and offers and each day we were looking at where we were in, in this path together and as long as that kind of progress was being made then our people were not being criminalized in that moment. At the end of the day, though, Dennis, this issue needed to be solved in British Columbia. As a regional chief of Ontario, mm. I had absolutely no authority or ability to solve this problem so that our people in Ontario could be safe, and we simply ran out of time. There was there wasn't enough happening and then there was uh, this deadline that was set by CN and right. and we simply just were out of time and they moved in and I think that ultimately nobody won. There's no winners in this situation. This is a lose-lose for everybody involved and I think what happened to the people that were arrested is uh, it, I was upset uh, watching some of that footage, you know, five policers, police officers, you know, holding down one one guy. I mean, it was very uh, it was very scary to watch, and it was very upsetting to watch. Chief Archibald, we'll have to leave it there. Appreciate you taking some time for us.
Yeah, thank you.